we are going to be doing something rather historic. Uh, a group of us Eclipse Chasers are going to be getting on a plane, a regularly scheduled passenger plane from Alaska Airlines, that on its normal course from Anchorage to Honolulu, by virtue of being delayed a half an hour with its schedule, is going to intercept the shadow of the moon during tomorrow's total eclipse. Joe, he's been working on it for almost a year, I think, at least eight months uh, that I knew about it. And as soon as I heard that it was reasonably in the works, I, I was on board and I bought my ticket. And now we've got the chief pilot of Alaska Airlines on board, uh, going to be actually on board the flight. He's been interviewed by uh, the airline's blog uh, author that he's going to be making every effort to follow one of our multiple uh, alternative flight plans to make sure that we get into the shadow and it'll be amazing for everybody on the plane. Yeah, I was going to share with you that, that our, our, um, our pace and constraint on all of this is actually fuel. We are fuel limited, so of course we're going to buy us to be early, but we can't be more than 10 or 15 minutes early on the planned MEI because I can't burn, you know, I don't have the luxury of having a lot of gas. That's one of the limited things on this rabbit flight, depending on the wind. So it'd be fun to take off 30 minutes early and burn all that time in route, but you know, to, to absorb it. Always, always going to buy us being early. But fuel is I went into this trip assuming we wouldn't see the eclipse because we knew there were a lot of variables. The main one that you normally have to deal with is clouds. So we knew we wouldn't have to deal with clouds, most likely. But the big variable was how cooperative would the airline and the crew be, and would there be mechanical problems? Would there be weather problems in Anchorage in winter? That was a big concern. So would we actually get there? Well, no. Is that tomorrow, if the wind is anything other than what's forecast, we're either going to be drifting east or west based on what the flight plan went was. Joe had managed to convince Alaska Airlines to move this flight a half an hour. It, it was a no-brainer. This, this was something I had to be a part of. Only the second time in history that this has happened with a regular passenger plane. I'd like to propose a toast, if I could, to the inexorable laws of celestial mechanics who heat me <laughs> to the greatest airline in the world and the greatest group of customers I've ever had the pleasure uh, of being on my airplane. <laughs> to the Eclipse. <laughs> I knew there would probably be some sort of media around because I'd seen the press release that Alaska Airlines put out and, and they had interviewed me, their PR guy had interviewed me for their, for their uh, blog. So we have been wondering, well, how much media will there be? And so there, I think there was so much, somewhat more than we'd expected. And most of us got there early, three hours before the flight. So I thought it was great. I think there was one news crew when I got there. And then uh, the rest of our people were there for the regular passengers. And so it was like, uh, it was like a carnival. Uh, Paula said it was like a party, you know, from, from, from the time we got to the gate the whole flight, it was just like a big party, you know, for, a party for Eclipse people. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, Glenn, Glenn sent me new information, believe it or not, late last night. I got two emails from late last night. What did you get? And uh, I got, he sent me a whole list based upon the jet streak of 150 knots, west-southwest component. Have you already he, provided to your I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. Uh, but, uh, it's really like will. He says that with this new information, if we could squeeze out maybe another three seconds. Nice. This is, this is uh, done by Glenn Schneider, Dr. Glenn Schneider, who was in Indonesia for the eclipse, but he's been very kind to map everything out for us and to write the flight plan up. The winds where we're going to be for the eclipse are at the uh, 200 millibar or 38,000 foot level. They're going to be blowing at about 150 knots, which is a bit of a concern, I think, to uh, the pilots. And now we're looking at one minute and 55.2 seconds, a gain of 3.1 seconds with the correction for the uh, limb of the moon. So we're actually going to gain possibly another couple of seconds with this uh, new uh, information based upon the high level winds. Eclipse classes for everybody. <laughs> this is the first eclipse to touch the continent of the United States in 38 years. And you are lucky because we've been going through an eclipse draft in the U.S. But now we have an eclipse surface starting next year with this one. It's the same configuration, we have the same seats, but we have 
few extra rows in the back that are left empty. So some of us who are on the plane who didn't get window seats will be able to go in the back and arrange that with the uh, captains. Yeah, we have the other glasses because you know for that partial phase, you've got to have glasses on your eyes. Oh yeah, you can't wear sunglasses during the total phase when it's blacked out, then you don't need the glasses. Well, the flag is here, we're safe. Come on, Craig, hold that baby up. He carries a flag, an eclipse flag, big four by six flag that was made, and it has been to every total eclipse Everyone since I think the early 70s. Yeah. Oh, is this going to be 31? 31. Fabulous. Now, after the eclipse is over, the tradition will be that we will parade it up and down the aisle of the plane. <laughs> Folks, if I could have your attention in the boarding area for all the passengers that are flying flight 870 today from Anchorage to Honolulu. This is your captain speaking. Uh, normally, when the captain's standing at the gate speaking, it's not necessarily good news. Today it's fantastic news. Okay. We'll have an opportunity to observe a total solar eclipse of the sun from 35,000 feet. That event's going to occur about four hours and 11 minutes after we take off. So there'll be, there'll be something for everybody to see in the minutes just before totality, like a Broadway play. At curtain time, the lights are going to begin dimming in the aircraft as it gets progressively darker and as more and more of the sun gets covered. We'll have a lot more to say about this, obviously, when we get on board. But I think Alaska Airlines should be congratulated because most other airlines just give you a, an in-flight movie. We're going to go one better than that, much better than that. We're going to give you a chance to see something you may never see again, a total solar eclipse. Totality should begin at 5.35 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So that's in two hours, roughly two hours from now, a little less. Uh, we have a video camera set up in the uh, cockpit and, uh, and long windows. We have about 12 uh, uh, Eclipse enthusiasts, amateur astronomers, and scientists, rocket scientists, and jet pilot fighters and such that are on this flight and will record it, videotape it, including myself. We're looking very good. We're finding that we're having unusually high cloud tops. And there is a scare that it's possible to go to 40,000 feet. We cannot go to 40,000 feet because of fuel concerns. We can only max have a maximum altitude of 37,000 feet. We realize that most people on this plane, 90%, are aware of what they're going to see. You know, it's not so much the chase, you know, for some things it's the, the journey, not the destination, but for, I say for Eclipse, it's the destination and the journey is a bonus.